Hello everyone, my name is Clement Ozimek and I am a technical specialist for the infrastructure software. Today we will talk about Platea, which was developed here at CGS Labs. Platea is a software for roadway and reconstruction design. So let's take a look. Uh, Platea offers to users a lot of tools for designing a road from the plan view of all to the B model. It gives a lot of flexibility when designing alignments, cross sections, and it also supports the workflows. Our user interface uh, is very intuitive uh, and it follows basic design steps on our project. So if you are a new user, you will quickly learn how to use it. Uh, Platea allows, um, allows us to quickly create a preliminary basic design, but it also has the capabilities to create a more detailed design with 3D models. Uh, now let's take a quick look at some few functionalities in our design steps. So first we have our plan view. Here we can input points from different files, uh, which we can use them to create our own digital terrain model. And then there are also various 3D polyline tools and reports that we can use in our project. Uh, then we move to our alignments. Here we have different methods for drawing horizontal alignment. Uh, we can construct main elements and sample lines in different ways. Uh, also, there is a possibility to drape or project our alignment on different terrains, such as CGS or brick terrain, or even CGS points. After that, we can create a longitudinal profile. Here we draw interactively the vertical alignment. Uh, we can calculate uh, the input super elevations. Uh, all of these are then checked with our national standards that we support in Platea. So if something is not correct, I don't know, for the type of the road that it shows, it will give you a warning and let you know. Uh, we then move to our cross sections. So here we draw the elements, uh, such as upper layers of the road, uh, the embankments, the drainages, and all other things. Uh, we can get the quantity takeoff or the volumes, and we can use uh, this information to create a 3D model. So 3D model is created with 3D solids or all the user-defined materials in cross-sections. And this model can be used to uh, create a beam model. So we attach it with property sets, with properties. Uh, so for that, we use functionalities such as property manager and property set, set editor, where we define our tables and assign them to our 3D solids. Uh, then we have also an option to export it to IFC. And then let's check uh, the areas of application. So what are the areas of application for Plotea? Uh, well, Plotea is mostly used for designing highways, local and urban holes. Uh, also, we have tools to, for creating intersections and roundabouts, uh, but it can be used for various uh, projects for overpasses, bypasses, and even some side design uh, with the amount of tools that we have in Platea. Uh, so now we will move on to my technical demonstration where we will check uh, these steps. So now we will start with the technical demonstration. So here we have a brick scat with um, CGS Labs installed. Uh, if we move to our CGS Labs ribbon, you can see all the products that we have. And when we click Platea, it will also open up other ribbon tabs such as layout, rough and end cross sections. Uh, these are our uh, bigger design steps, so we will go over them. Uh, first of all, we'll start with the layout. We will define a new alignment, so we give it a custom name. For example, a nexus, and we give it a starting stage. Uh, then we can define the category of the road. So for this example, we will use connecting roads, main road, 
original load uh, and some design speed which we can change. Uh, and then we move to our plan view. We will um, input some points from a file. So we will use some uh, points that were reported by surveyor. And we will use that as base. So we have an X, Y, and Z coordinates and also some other information. Some additional attributes which we will import into a drawing. Um, if we zoom in, we will see the elevation of a point and uh, its name, but we can also show other information, uh, such as uh, what kind of a point it is, so which cross section, uh, and if we look out, we will see the right edge, left edge, and axis, and uh, which um, point corresponds to which center line. So uh, we have this information prepared and we can use it for our alignment and center lines. Uh, so based on this point, we can create an alignment. We have different uh, methods here. Uh, we can draw a tangent polygon stick method or we can use some kind of conversion. Uh, for this example, we will use the best fit method. So we will create best fit alignment and we will choose these points with the point attribute axis. Uh, I will select the uh, alignment direction and select which alignment I want to create. This will calculate in a few seconds of the best. Um, approximation for the main elements. So now we have a window for the lanes and widenings. We will just be okay for now. Uh, then we also have a window uh, or some kind of warning that says that horizontal elements don't match the selected standard. So uh, we, we need to check that. And also we, we get them the report for the best fit analysis, so we can see which points offset uh, are the most offset from the alignment. Uh, now that we have the whole the horizontal alignment, we can edit it. Uh, so we have these tools for edit alignment tangent polygon. We can select a vertex. vertex and just change the radius from this curve and maybe change where the spiral starts uh, or any other parameters that you want. It will again draw the lanes and we can change this for the full axis. Uh, so in this way we quickly got the whole alignment without drawing every main element by itself. Uh, now we can also create sample lines. So sample lines can be created uh, through these points. And for that, we will use create sample lines from points. And this will uh, collect the data from the layer and uh, we can choose which method uh, we will use. Uh, we select the width so for the left and the right side, and we will get the sample lines for the full alignment with uh, with the names and with the station included. Um, so the next part is uh, projecting or draping the alignment uh, to a surface or points in this case. Uh, so we use the next command, RAF, where we can select the surface or points, which will be used as elevation data. So let's click OK. We get these green uh, lines. And if we look in the TV view, uh, we can see that the full uh, alignment and the sample lines were projected on these elevations. 
Uh, so we also have an options to create a DTM or digital terrain model within CGS. Uh, we can use points or break lines, but we can also use bricks cut uh, surface. So for that example, we can maybe create a new axis. This will be our new road, for example. And I will just quickly draw tangent polygon well, in this location. Uh, so this new road can be now draped to a surface. I have a surface here, so I have a blue step surface prepared uh, with some triangle to match. Uh, so I can use that from another drawing. So let's go back to drape command and I will add another uh, external surface. I will choose the DVG that we use for that and it finds me the surface, uh, the bridge cut surface. So now if I drape it, I can see that uh, the elevation data has been found and the alignment has been projected. Uh, so now we can move on to our profile. Uh, but first, we can also create those lanes uh, that were set, uh, that were predefined, but we want to have them go over the left and right edge. So for that, we will just quickly delete those lanes and we will create new ones over these points. Uh, first of all, I will search for all the points that have the right edge uh, attribute. As we can see, it finds all the points. I will just select the first one and the last one, and I will put it to selection. Uh, then I will go to our side design, uh, ribbon tab and select the command polyline pump points. This will quickly create me a 3D line from the points with the right edge attributes. And I will also do this for the left edge. Let's create another line. And in a few seconds, I have these lines prepared. I will also need to have a uh, 2D polyline. So for the road lanes, uh, I will just use ones I already prepared beforehand. So now let's move on to our profile view. We will click the profile ribbon tab. We will select the correct uh, axis and use the draw profile view command. So now we select the scale that we want to use. We can choose the section of the surface and the starting and ending stage. We select OK and just pick a point where it will be drawn. Uh, so now we have for the surface or the elevation of the existing road and all other information such as horizontal elements, roadway widths, and all other from the plan. Uh, so now we will use uh, these uh, existing uh, cross sections that we have to define our existing super elevations. So I will use this draw just a super elevation command and just use the you know, file that I have already prepared and get these lines in this rubric. Uh, I can change them to our well, active super elevations. So I will just do that quickly. Uh, or I can define some new ones with a calculate command and you know, use the edit super elevations where I can 
change them manually. Uh, so now I can also calculate the new profile. So if I want to raise the existing uh, road, uh, if I want to move it up or down, or if I want to change uh, the width or the thickness of the courses for wearing course or base course, uh, or I can just lower everything, for example, like this, uh, 10 centimeters down. Uh, I also get all the volumes here calculated. And I can also draw the reconstruction points. So these reconstruction points will be used for, uh, for our new alignment, for our vertical alignment. Uh, for that, we can use the fast meet command as we did in the layout, but this is only for the vertical. Yeah. So I will use the reconstruction points and clip prepare. So now we get uh, the fourth for the best fit, and we can also see uh, all the curves, all the furniture, and um, we can change that uh, as we like. So we can change the profile, edit the profile, and set other parameters as we want. Uh, we can change this for the tangents or the uh, curves. So for example, like this, we can change this radius to something else. So now we can move on to our frost sections. Let's click the frost section silicon tab and I will use the draw clone sections here. I will just select the current drawing or we can use some other drawings to draw the cross sections. Uh, we can change all these settings as we wish. So I will just change its elevation and I will select some point in the drawing. This will draw all the 114 cross sections that we have in our plan view. And let's take a look. And we also get uh, the road to fight and the super elevation. So we can use that to draw other elements. Uh, so we can make some pavement elements. For example, the first surface layer, I will use the uh, surface course material, or I can make our own uh, and define the thickness of the layer. I will choose under which lengths I want to draw this and this will uh, draw me all the all the surface layers on all the cross sections. Uh, for this case we can also use macro so I will use that on the first three uh, cross sections and I will uh, draw it again. In this uh, macro, I already defined all the materials and the elements that I want to have. So uh, I want that to draw it by hand. Uh, so here are the first three cross sections, and I can uh, make a quantity to take off. So I will do that for each cross sections and also the song. Wow. for all three processes. So I get these informations for all the, uh, all the materials. And I also get the sum or the volumes for each of those. Uh, now that I draw the elements, I can make a 3D model of the chip. So I will move to our utility tab. And I will use the draw of the demo that uh, I have all the materials that I used, and I can also select a proper tilt, which um, will be automatically filled with information that we have. So I will use the surface course and surface and maybe some CGS property 
that for the base because every flip will carry. I will wait a few seconds so that the solids are created. And I will just check it in the 3D view to see how it was created. I will change the visual style to more realistic for the shaded. And I can see all the solids that were created. Uh, well, I can now also define some new property sets or change them, or I can uh, use the property set editor command and select the surface layer. And I can see the property group that was assigned to this solid. I can now this, uh, I can now export this to IFC and it will give me an IFC with all the necessary information. At this point, I would like to invite you to try out our free trial. So we offer a 14 day free trial without any functional limitations. Uh, you can request a test license on our product page. And if you need any additional information or you have questions, you can let us know by email. Uh, this will be everything from my part. And I would just like to thank you for your attention. Have you ever seen wind turbines being transported? Probably not, as the transport usually takes place late at night when there is no traffic on the roads. Transport from the factory to the installation site presents a big challenge because the rotor blades are molded in one piece that can be longer than 80 meters. To make sure that these parts are delivered successfully, sweat bed analysis must be made along the route. These analyses are very complex and require a lot of time. However, in AutoPad software you can make such assessments quickly and easily with a few clicks. My name is Petra Tichole and I'm going to show you some interesting features found in the AutoPad software. AutoPad is a professional software solution for vehicle swap bed analysis used by civil engineers, transportation professionals, architects and urban planners. AutoPad enables the simulation and uh, analysis of vehicles' maneuvers, 3D vehicle animations, and more. In addition to the previously mentioned wind turbines, transportability analysis can be performed on practically all possible vehicles, from cars to airplanes. Civil engineers use it for verifying the usability of all types of road design projects, including roads roads, intersections, roundabouts, underpasses, overpasses, and similar places. AutoPet also provides easy-to-use tools for architects and urban planners. They can perform simple vehicle maneuvers, carry out turning simulations, and identify potential limitations in the design of garages, parking spaces, and intervention routes. Moreover, AutoPet is a proven useful tool in the process of factory design. Using it, engineers can simulate the transportation of goods on the factory lanes as well as simulate automated guided vehicles for the transportation of goods on factory grounds. Finally, AutoPet also enables simulation of aircraft maneuvers to support the design of airport infrastructure. The biggest advantage of the software is that it includes a huge library of country-specific reference vehicle libraries defined by national guidelines and an extended collection of real vehicles covering aircrafts, buses, trucks, trailers for wind turbine transport, cranes, emergency vehicles, and more. In addition, AutoPet also provides an extended vehicle customization option, enabling users to customize available vehicles in the libraries provided or create completely new vehicles. By scanning this QR code, you can find a list of all vehicles. 
For each vehicle, uh, you can find the horizontal and vertical analysis feature to simulate the vehicle maneuvers and check transportability. You can compare one vehicle's path with another vehicle or with different built objects to create a comparison report. But that's not all AutoPet can do. In the latest release, our development has proven once again that they know how to think out of the box and they took AutoPet development to the next level. We introduced the 3D vehicle modeling creation option and 3D vehicle animation feature. You can now create a 3D animation based on any horizontal swap path analysis. And all 3D models are created automatically, even if the vehicle has custom-defined values. The fact that the user does not have to create a 3D vehicle model by hand gives AutoPad a great competitive advantage over other similar programs. Now we will move to the software, where based on an example, you will be able to see for yourself that creating a sweat pad analysis is really fast, simple and effective. Click on the vehicle library and select one random truck. Then you can click on this button to edit this vehicle. Enter the new name and press OK. You can now change the parameters on the right and add another trailer by clicking this plus button on the left. Then you also have some additional settings to customize your vehicle. When you have defined all the parameters, just confirm by clicking OK. Now you can first make a horizontal analysis of this vehicle. This can be done in two ways. The first option is to run the easy drive command and another option is to run the horizontal analysis and then select the polyline that represents the vehicle root and press enter. Once you have the swap path analysis, you can start the animation. Click on the animation icon, select the existing swap path and click play. You can now see the animation of the vehicle. Based on this analysis, you can also check offsets, collisions and generate different reports such as steering angle and vehicle profile. These reports are dynamic and update automatically while editing the path. Before we move to on the 3D animation, I will show you another trick that will make your job a lot easier if you need to create an analysis for different types of vehicles. This new feature called Sweat Pad to Polyline creates a new polyline along the existing sweat pad. You can then select a new vehicle and perform analysis on the same pad. Now let's take a look at the most interesting new feature of the AutoPad software. This is a 3D animation and related 3D vehicle modeling creation option. Run the 3D animation command and select an existing path. Then you press the play button and the vehicle starts moving along the path. Finally, you can also create a 3D model of the vehicle anywhere along the path. To sum up, AutoPad is an excellent software with many powerful tools for creating horizontal and vertical sweat pad analysis. In addition to the features shown in today's presentation, it has several other functionalities that you can try at any time. Download the free trial version of AutoPad, test it and see how easy and quickly you can learn to use it. 
You can request a test license via the product page on our website. To keep up to date with our latest blog posts, webinars, tutorials and success stories of our customers, follow us on LinkedIn. Thank you for your attention and feel free to contact us if you are curious about the big picture to get a better idea of what Autopad is all about. Are you one of those people who are spending hours and hours of your precious time modeling road traffic signaling? If your answer is yes, then you are in the right place. My name is Petra Tihole and I am very excited to take the next 10 minutes to show you some powerful tools to speed up and simplify in the process of designing 3D traffic signs, road markings and gantries using AutoSign. AutoSign is a professional software solution for planning traffic, signs and road markings in both urban and inter-urban road infrastructure, redesigning the traffic flow or implementing new practical solutions to any problem that traffic engineers may face. It also provides tools to design details of parking facilities such as the limitation lines, vertical signaling, high control gantries and more. Besides, it is also used for warehouse, traffic design and management, cycle path network design, ski resorts, sports center design and safety driving center design. The advantage of using AutoSign is that it includes extensive collections of uh, country-specific traffic sign libraries, road markings, traffic lines and other street furniture elements. Users also have the advanced option to include their own traffic sign blocks into a customized library in AutoSign and employ them in designs with the same features that the predefined libraries possess. The biggest competitive advantage over other similar programs is definitely the creation of a 3D model. It only takes one extra click to create a 3D model of traffic signs, road markings and gantries based on a 2D. Besides, AutoSign also has tools for attaching attributes and IFC export and import which allows you to collaborate with other experts on demanding BIM projects. In today's demonstration, we are focusing on the traffic signs with editable text. These traffic signs are included in AutoSign libraries and can be easily recognized by the suffix stamp in their names. At the beginning, run the library manager command, click on the down